what do we consider when designing water permaculture system? When designing a system, we always start with water and then we design other systems around the water. Obviously, if there are structures or access already present on site, we try to harmonize water with these elements as much as possible. It can be sometimes tough, but a good permaculture designer can predict certain problems and tell you how you can avoid them. So before we look at specific design ideas, let's look at the question, why? Why we need the good water system or water harvesting system? When it rains, not all water gets infiltrated. In fact, it's usually a smaller percentage that gets soaked into the soil. And most of the water is, as we've learned, cannot be absorbed because the soil is either too dry or too wet or too compact. So water follows the path of least resistance um, downhill to the valley, to streams and rivers and to the ocean. And sometimes even after big rain, there could be still some water scarcity. I've read various opinions on the internet about permaculture practices, and sometimes people are under impression that permaculture water harvesting systems steal water that could otherwise fall to lower areas. Well, do they? Think about it. When it's raining, the water flows with speed downhill, and we know that this water is not infiltrating to the soils quickly. And as a consequence, water is rapidly lost to the river, um, which in turn flows to the sea. Um, and in effect, water is quickly lost to, to oceans. But what happens when we install water harvesting systems higher in the landscape? Well, groundwater levels can increase once the landscape uphill is abundant in water. Um, and what happens to the surplus? The surplus water overflows, but where? It overflows steadily downhill and to the valley, also with help of tree roots. So you see, there are different types of water flow in the ground. We have overland flow or runoff, which happens when rain is falling faster than it can soak into the soil. We have saturated overland flow occurring when water temporarily reaches saturation and then escapes to the surface, like streams in areas with high water tables. And we have through flow, which is water flowing near the surface. And finally, groundwater flow is the water moving in the peak underground storage. So there is no stealing. We just prolong the time in which water is available in the landscape. And the surplus water with the gravity force gets pulled down anyways. Um, so lower landscapes get this water eventually, but in nice steady doses, ensuring better water infiltration down in the valley. So it's a very safe and effective distribution of water. Imagine how many floods would be prevented if we managed the water appropriately, not only lower landscapes, but also higher. Um, imagine if cities were designed to capture road runoff and this water, instead of overflowing to one place that gets clogged, that water would be distributed in a smart way to areas with vegetation, like trees and parks and our gardens. So each place would receive a nice steady flow of water. Another really interesting thing is that we can multiply the amount of rain that comes onto the land if we have water harvesting surfaces like roofs and roads. It's now no longer about the amount of rainfall that hits the soil. It's about gathering more water than the original surface of the land we're dealing with. For example, here's the picture showing a very lucky person cultivating the land all around the hill. They can put a diversion drain around the contour of the land that collects water just sliding off the hill. Remember, water flows at 90 degree angle to contour line. So that's why contour farming is so efficient. 
And that's why your garden rose would get more water this way if you designed it along the contour lines. So the diversion drain is connected to the pond and the pond harvests water for later use or for immediate use if necessary. For example, if it rains a lot, the pond pipe is open and flows to other diversion drains or other air forks and is distributed to where it's needed. Another example is on our homestead. So we collect rainwater from the road, which collects rainwater from the hill above. So I calculated that the road gathers rainwater from about three hectares, which is six acres, and this water flows to our land. You see how much water you can manage? Our open land, um, which we cultivate, is only one hectare, two acres, but we get overland flow from six acres. That's so much more than if you had no collection area and you relied only on pumping up groundwater for irrigation, depleting the groundwater resources. So in permaculture, you always look at reviving natural ecosystems. So as a consequence, groundwater reserves get replenished, especially with swales, which we'll talk about in another webinar. And the surplus overflows downhill in a safe way with the help of gravity and tree root systems. The need to import water on permaculture farms is therefore vastly diminished. So tell me in the chat, does it feel it's a sustainable way of treating the land and precious resources or not?